Pete here for Studio Live today and in this GarageBand for iPhone quick tip we're going to be taking a look at the brand new plugins and EQ settings that we have here in GarageBand for iPhone and on the iOS. So let's jump in and take a look. Now when the new GarageBand came out Apple were really pushing the new Alchemy synth because it's got a whole bunch of new sounds, it's very cool and, and it's what people have really been waiting for but for me one of the best things, and they haven't really pushed this very hard, is the new EQ and plugin options that we have here. So if you've used a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, on a Mac or a PC, you'd be very used to the concept of plugins. But these have been really lacking for a long, long time in GarageBand on iOS. Not anymore. We've got some great new options here. So this is our new voice recorder function. So you'll notice this has also been given a facelift. We've got a whole bunch of additional controls here. Gone are the robot and telephone and very generic and pretty ordinary effects that we had in the past. And we've got the ability to actually control our tone and our compressor and our drive and our reverb directly from within here. So that's pretty cool to start with. Really liking that. I also really like the input and output right here on the front screen. It makes it really easy to adjust. But when we hit this little options button, you'll notice that we've got a whole bunch of new options that have opened up here. So we've got really easy access to our track settings, first of all, so we can go into our recording and we can do multi-take recording. That's a topic for another video, uh, another cool option that we've just been introduced to. So we've got access to track volume, track pan, the mute and solo buttons, and then we've got plugins and EQ. So we've got our compressor that we can adjust here. We've also got the treble and bass, so some basic sort of EQ. So you're thinking, well, that's not really much. That's not a whole lot of different. And echo and reverb, again, not a big difference from previous versions. However, if we hit the little arrow here next to plugins, wow, now we're talking. Now we've got some really cool things happening. What you'll notice here is that we've got little blue lights here that tell us which of our plugins are actually on right now. So we can actually turn on and off the plugins. If we drop down the noise gate, we can adjust that plugin directly there. If we drop down the compressor, same deal. And oh, here we go. So for so many years, the GarageBand for iPhone has lacked any sort of compressor settings. And if, again, if you've used a, a door on a PC or a Mac, you'd be very used to setting things like ratio, attack, release, gain, mix, these sort of things. So we have a lot more of these that are actually now available that we can select here, which gives us a lot more control over how our compressor actually works, as well as the threshold. So if you don't understand any of those terms, don't worry, or go online and search for uh, compressor or compression settings or compressor, compressor plugin. There's plenty of resources out there to explain what that does. But basically, in a nutshell, it means you get a whole heap more control rather than just a single knob that you turn up and down. If we go into Effects EQ, Oop, we'll leave that one for now. So we've got Effect EQ Enhanced Tuning. So these are just on off options within here. The Overdrive has a bunch of options, Drive Tone and Output. Uh, we've got Track Reverb, which again, we've got a whole heap of options that we can do. We can look at the reverb time. We can look at the pre-delay, how dry and wet the signal is. Really good options there. And then my favorite thing, the Visual EQ. So again, if you've used a door, you will be very familiar with a parametric EQ. And what we now have is the ability to adjust the low, the mid, and the treble frequency and range so that we can actually set our EQ with a lot more than just a single treble and bass knob, which is very cool. That's not it though. The final and probably most awesome thing is you'll notice that there is an edit button here. Let's hit the edit button. And now you'll see we have the ability to remove some of these plugins and you're thinking, well, that's great. We can remove plugins. But the very cool thing is if we remove some of these, let's delete that one. We now have an empty space in our little rack here. So what that means is we can add in a plugin. And here we have built-in GarageBand effects, bit crusher, chorus, distortion, flanger, microphaser, overdrive, track echo, track reverb, tremolo, and vocal transformer very cool stuff. So we can actually go in and add these effects into our track. And the good thing about adding effects here now is that in the past it's been very difficult to add an effect that you could both record through 
but then also have on your track afterwards and adjust after the recording had been done. So for instance, if you used interapp audio to put an effect on a track, then it records through that effect and that effect is basically written to the track and you can't then adjust it afterwards. What we have now is a really cool ability to do this. One last thing you'll see here, audio unit extensions. And this is, I keep saying the coolest, but this is probably the coolest thing because now we can use audio unit AU extensions within iOS. So any app that you install that supports audio unit can now be used as a plugin on your track in GarageBand. So here I have the AU voice rack FX. If I tap on that one, you can see that now I have that as one of my effects. Now I haven't actually gone through and tried to put multiple audio units on here and see exactly how hard you can push this, but it's a very cool option to have third party plugins that you can now use on iOS. So let's tap on that. And there we go. We've brought in our reverb within this particular app and we've got all of our custom settings that we can adjust. And once we've adjusted them, we can hit done and we're still right there in GarageBand and we'll record through and also be able to play back with that effect. So that is the plugins and EQ setting here in GarageBand and that's available across all of the different tracks. So it's not just voice recording, it's the amp, it's any of the instruments, so any of the actual um, instruments, the playable instruments within um, the touch instruments, that's the word, touch instruments can also have all of these plugins and effects added. So it just gives GarageBand finally some real customization and the ability to really craft your tones and sounds to make them sound amazing. So I hope you got something out of this. I hope you upgrade and can use these new features because I'm pretty excited and I think it's going to really change the way that we record using GarageBand on the iPhone.